Welcome to Spokane Talks, where you'll find the latest in community news, views, and conversation. Spokane Talks is brought to you by Rada Paint and River Ridge Hardware. Now, join your host to hear what Spokane's talking about. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us. So we are here on the Hutton Settlement's gorgeous campus in Spokane Valley, tucked away in the hills. Uh, and you know what's funny, because some people don't even know that the campus is here. And in Tucked Away in the Valley, it's kind of secluded in its own little beautiful area where the garden is right behind us on the campus. And so I'm joined by Jessica, the communications director, and Tana, a board member here at Hutton. And so Jessica, tell us a little bit about the upcoming events for Hutton because this is the centennial year, 100 years that we're celebrating this summer and you have some really exciting things going on that are open to the public. Right, yeah so we've had a year full of uh, events planned so we're especially looking forward to kind of the mid-mark which is our big summer weekend July 19th and 20th. Um, we'll start out the 19th with a bronze tribute statue unveiling and dedication ceremony um, that'll and be it's at 10 o'clock. gorgeous. Yes. I've already I've already gotten a sneak peek of it. You're gonna want to see it. Uh, so that's at 10 o'clock and then um, we'll have a lunch provided by Washington Trust Bank that day. Cool. Um, hot dogs and chips and then um, at 1 30 is gonna be a cornerstone rededication ceremony where the Grand Lodge of the Masons or the Grand Mason uh, Master of the Masons um, is coming out for the state of Washington and they'll be doing the rededication ceremony wow. like they did in 1919. That's really cool. Okay. And you know, Tana, you're a board member. So talk a little bit about why you got involved with Hutton because there's 21 members on the board, all women, and it's been that way since 1919 when Hutton was founded. Tell us, a little, why did you get involved? Why did you decide that, okay, this is the right fit for me? I have such a passion for children and uh, just the whole mission of Hutton, uh, what they do out here for the kids and the forever home is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you know, you and I were talking a little bit before we went on air that it's so unique what's happening here at Hutton because after I spoke with Chud a couple weeks ago and we did a special here on the Hutton campus, I went home and I did a little research on, you know, similar campuses and homes across the country, and there aren't many. No. So this is very unique and special to have this right here in our community. And, you know, you started on the board in 2004. And tell us a little bit about serving on the board, because you mentioned it's a lifetime, you know, you're committing for a lifetime. Well, it couldn't be more rewarding uh, for myself. and the board members that I share this wonderful task with because some of them have been on the board for like 40 years and wow. learning from the older members and just um, putting your arms around this whole place is just, mm -hmm. I can't, there's no superlatives that would be proper for it because it just, it's in your heart. Levi Hutton was one of the region's most compassionate visionaries. Levi made a fortune in the Idaho silver mines. He took that wealth and fulfilled a dream of his, and that was to build a children's orphanage to serve underprivileged youth. He built the Hutton settlement in 1919, and he also invested so that the mission could outlive him. Here at River Ridge Hardware Garden Center, where we have all the plants and flowers that will spruce up your yard. From the lilacs for Spokane's Lilac City, to awesome hanging baskets, and pots that you can actually put the hanging baskets in. Here at River Ridge Hardware, we want to help you set up your landscape needs. Neighbors helping neighbors at River Ridge Hardware. Immediately, once you come up the long driveway here at Hutton, 
uh, I can't even I can't even put it into words but I just feel so relaxed my heart is just in the right place immediately I've been here several times now and it's a very special place it's a very special place and Jessica tell us a little bit about the planning you know the centennial year for Hutton it's taken three years three years in the making to put this all together and why why did we decide okay 100 years we're gonna make such a big deal um, and have all these events and do this special planning uh, well, I got to come in over halfway through that. So I've only been with Hutton for about a year. So okay. Tana, one of the co-chairs <laughs> of the committee, um, they've been really hard at work. And um, it's great to have a board that's so invested and dedicated in the mission because Absolutely. they're so critical in making sure that these events happen. Um, I'd say, you know, this 100-year mark is a celebration for the entire community. And that special mm -hmm. feeling that you talk about, Saturday the 20th, um, is a day there's going to be a car show, uh, mm -hmm. there's lunch, there's going to be a generational baseball game. We're joined by Babe Ruth's granddaughter. And that's really neat because Babe Ruth actually visited the Hutton campus in its early days. Mm -hmm. And there's a photo of it in the wall that Chad showed me when I was here a couple weeks ago. So it's really special that now one of Babe Ruth's relatives is coming mm -hmm. to Hutton's campus for this alumni baseball game. I just think yeah. that's so neat. Yeah. And I think, um, so really it's opening up, it's, it's honoring that first hundred years, mm -hmm. that legacy that still lives today, um, giving alumni the chance to come back and say, this is where I grew up, this is where I got my start. But it's an opportunity for our entire community to celebrate Absolutely. that, where they can come on campus, they can get that exact same feeling. It's going to be a little bit more chaotic than it is today. <laughs> um, that they can come on campus and get the exact same feeling I that you get when you're here. I love it. A family in the truest sense of the word. Thank you ladies both oh. so much and thank you for joining us and I hope you'll come visit Hutton on July 19th and the 20th. Bye bye. See you tomorrow night and thanks again for taking care of the painting. I got this. Bye. Weekends are made for painting. Let the experts at Rada Paint take care of you. Hi. This looks amazing. Rada Paint, over 80 years of quality, tradition, and trust. Find it in every can. Every child comes to Hutton with some degree of trauma, not knowing who to trust, not knowing that they can trust. They come from families where the adults have been inconsistent or abusive or profoundly neglectful. And they don't even know if it's possible to hope that a relationship can work for them. That's how they come to Hutton. Hi folks, Ken Sachs here with Real Estate Talks, here with my guest, Kent Adams. And talking about real estate in the market. Yeah, what what's going on right now? We hear a lot. We're in that spring summertime now. Sure. Uh, my wife says there are a lot of homes for sale, but that's pretty normal at this time of year, isn't it? Well, we're still definitely in a seller's market, Kent. Yes. yes. Uh, our and why? Yeah, so our inventory, well, we don't have enough inventory. Our inventory is less than two months supply, okay. which means that our current pace of sales in two months, it's gone, wow. provided nothing else comes on the market. Right. So right. that tells us this is a seller's market. Anything from less than about six to five months, we're again just under two, is a seller's market. Six, six to five? Uh, six months. to five and less is a seller's okay. market. And we're at two. 1.8. One point. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a lot less than half. That's even. a I lot mean, less. Uh, what does that mean? What that means is for sellers, it's exciting. For yeah. buyers, it could be a little frustrating. Yeah. So sellers, what that means is uh, you uh, you can expect. You still have to price it appropriately yeah, yeah. because we're seeing sellers overconfidence, overpricing, oh, yeah. doesn't do you any good. Uh, it does sell other homes, but doesn't sell yours. And, and when you go to list your property and put it on the market, the hottest time is when? 
right when it hits the market. Really? Okay. So you want to nail that. Okay. So if you put it at the three hundred thousand dollar home at four hundred and fifty, because I think I can get four fifty, you've lost a good part of that market. You have who may lost, never come back. That's exactly yeah. right. Plus those homes priced appropriately at four fifty. Now we're gonna sell. You're helping sell those homes. Yeah. So, but that's not what you want to do. No. So you want to number one align yourself with a experienced, trusted realtor. Okay. And then listen to that person. What a, what a novel idea yes. because that person is going to come with a lot of experience, know what the market's like, know what's selling in the neighborhood. Yes. Okay, because you do your research before you go out to the seller, right? And That's right. you know what, what the comps are basically. Absolutely. And, and, and so forth. And as a seller, ask your realtor, what kind of market are we in? Yeah. Oh, it's a seller's market? What does that mean? Yeah. What do I need to know as a seller? Yeah. And your professional should be able to counsel you. I was going to say, if they don't know that. That tells you something, doesn't it? It sure does. So we got to price it right. Okay. Uh, we still have to have it in good condition. Yes. Uh, but we also want to pay particular attention to whatever offer we get, the buyer's ability to perform. Right. Because you, otherwise you will come off the market, nobody will be looking at you, yeah. and you will lose valuable time uh, messing around with somebody who never could buy your house in the first place. Yeah. So it's really key. Um, other things, you know, you'll talk to your realtor about, talk about the inspection period. Right. That's a free look for the buyer, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Don't pack your bags right. and celebrate. Right. Get through that. Yeah. So those are just some of the things we need to know. Wow. And there's a lot more, but we need to roll into a break and we'll see you shortly. Spokane Valley Summer Theater presents its 2019 season of three main stage blockbuster favorites for the entire family. The popular jukebox musical, Always, Patsy Cline, starring Andrea Olson. The world's most beloved musical, Rodgers and Hammerstein's The Sound of Music. And the smash hit ABBA sensation, Mamma Mia. Order your tickets today at svsummertheater.com. Okay, uh, Kent, you had a question during break. What, yeah, what's your question? Yeah, I, I, you know, based on what you were saying before with the seller's market and everything else, this seems to be a fairly complicated situation, and that's why you bring in an expert, right? Right. But what questions should the seller, what questions should the buyer be asking when it comes to that contract? Because everything in real estate comes down to a written contract. That's right. That's right. So great question. Uh, so with sellers, Kent, uh, we need to understand what does the inspection contingency look like? What does it mean to me? Uh, uh, er almost every offer we can expect to see an inspection contingency. Pretty much standard today, isn't it? Pretty much standard, yeah. especially after some suits that we had in years in the past oh, yeah. that highlighted the importance yeah. of a buyer doing an inspection. So, uh, but that's a free look. It's a free yeah, look. Yeah. Buyer can walk away scot-free. No matter what the time. reason. No matter, they don't even need a reason. Yeah. They can wake up and say, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't yeah. wanna buy the house. Yeah. So you need to understand that with your realtor. Uh, we need to understand, before I take my house off the market for mm -hmm. you buyer, can you really buy my house? Yeah. So yeah. I wanna dig into your ability to perform. Right. So let's not overlook that. Do you have a pre-approved for a mortgage? If, if you're a cash buyer, what cash are you talking about? Is it really cash? Right. Yeah. Ca cash is cash. Yeah. Cash is not home equ equity line of credit. Cash okay. is not gift funds from grandma. Okay. Cash is not, I got to sell my Cessna 182. <laughs> That's not cash. Okay. Cash is, you, here's cash. It's funny you're pulling those things out because you've been there, haven't Absolutely. you? <laughs> Absolutely. I can't make this up. No. Um, included items, seller. Understand yeah. with your realtor before you even go on the market, Hey, what stays with the house? Yes. Because things that contractually stay with the house, you may not want to leave with the house. Right, right. So your realtor, and you need to have that conversation. Yeah, those curtains that grandma made, That's you right. might want to be sure to take with you, but you don't want to take them down in the meantime. That's right. Well, you could swap them out before okay. you go on the market. Now right. there's no question. Okay. Uh, does point. my buyer have to sell a house? And yeah. is that house under contract? Yes. Things to ask. Uh, seller disclosures, what's that all about? So we need to provide current, accurate uh, seller disclosures to a buyer. Like what? In most cases. Well, it's about six pages of yes, don't, no, uh, or N-A. Yes, no, don't, no, N-A. Oh, okay. So we have all that to do. Now, your realtor is not going to help you with that because they can't. Okay. Uh, buyer's really quick. Uh, inspection periods, I said, understand yep. that. Understand the difference between possession and occupancy. Okay. You don't want to buy a house with a lease on it when you're planning to move in. Yes. And you haven't addressed occupancy, different from possession, 
earnest money? What is it? How much is it? How do I get it back? So, Kent, those are just some of the things, wow. and there's lots more there. But we're being told here that we're at the end of the show. So, thank you for watching Real Estate Talks with Kent Sachs. See you next time. And welcome back to The Pulse. Uh, and we have Maddie Burgess and Kimball DeMars joining us from Spokane Valley Summer Theater. And they're in the upcoming production of The Sound of Music, which opens on Friday. Friday. Is that scary? <laughs> yes. You're, it's, I think we're going to be ready. We have a show. You're absolutely ready. And I should note that I'm actually stage managing this show. So I've kind of gotten to see it all come together. <laughs> and it really is, theater magic is real. Mm. It's amazing to see, especially in summer theater, you only have, what, a few weeks to put a show together? <laughs> yeah. And it's incredible to see how far we've come and how, and this is a massive show, The Sound of Music. It's two and a half hour show mm -hmm. that we're putting together this quickly, and yet it's beautiful and brilliant and the community, I think, is going to love it. So what's it been like for you guys? Maddie, you play Liesel in the show, the yeah. oldest Von Trapp child. Yeah. And Kimball, you play Rolf, mm -hmm. a Nazi in the show. Turn Nazi. <laughs> Turn Nazi. I half, can put that part half. aside. <laughs> and so what's kind of been that dynamic for you, almost going back in time to the 1930s um, and kind of flipping things on its head? Because here we are in 2019. Is it, it has it been hard to really tap into that that lifestyle and that time period what about you Kimball uh well it is I feel like it's a lot more personal when you're there because sometimes we just talk about World War II and some of the terrible things that happened there especially right. during the Nazi reign and we just kind of brush it aside and we talk about it but we don't really you know really grasp it so I think right. the sound of music part of it is kind of a lesson to be learned about the kind of terror and the family involved in the Nazi re regime Absolutely. And I know, like, Liesel, because you are falling in love with Rolf mm -hmm. in the show, that's another element because you love him, but yet he's on the other side. So yeah. how's, how's tapping into that as an actor been for you? Um, it makes it more real because it's, like, like Kimball was saying, it's easy to talk about the events mm -hmm. that happened during World War II and you understand that they're horrifying. But when you actually think about it and think about that that actually happened to families and to girls like Liesl and having to actually come to terms like that, like, it's not only heartbreaking, it's also, like, a more evil heartbreaking for right. her right and you know the thing about the sound of music is you see so many different sides of that story whether it's on you know the nazi side or the family side mm -hmm. of things um and even with the sisters the reverend mother the nuns mm -hmm. um you kind of get a feel for so many different areas and elements of this story which i think is really special and but on top of that of course, why people love this show so much is the music. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of curious, did you guys know the lyrics to 16 going on 17 before rehearsals even started? Uh, yeah. She did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, of course I knew it, but like I never dreamed what, I mean, this is like the first musical I grew up with watching the movie, but right. like I never dreamed, hey, one day I want to be that character, but like, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> movie I think the movie is brilliant of course Julie Andrews right. have you seen the movie oh, both of you well sound of music was the first movie musical I ever watched it was the first one that and I, I remember I would get it from the library and then I just like rewatch all like the musical <laughs> scenes like over and over and over in like my living room so this is also so like funny. an extra special <laughs> show <laughs> and you know I remember as a kid and those of you at home know this the sound of music is so long that I remember as a kid not being able to watch the entire thing in yeah. one like <laughs> one sitting so yeah. I would have to like pause it and then maybe like the next day or the next weekend I'd watch the rest yeah. of it because it is such a long it's a long production a long show um, the show is a lot of fun and I already know even we, though we haven't opened that the community is gonna love it and you open on Friday and you can get tickets at www.svsummertheater.com 
But there's also another upcoming show at Spokane Valley Summer Theater. And what is that, Liesl? Mamma Mia. <laughs> and are you guys in Mamma Mia? I'm no. not actually. I'm no. not. Just sound of music. But you should come see it anyway. <laughs> you know, but it is funny because a lot of, you know, uh, we have quite a few cast members in the Sound of Music that are also in Mamma Mia. Um, so that's been kind of fun for them to work on both shows mm -hmm. at once. I know Mamma Mia is already getting started and well yeah. underway. So that's exciting too. And Mamma Mia is such a fun show. Um, it's, th there's so much energy and mm -hmm. it's a little, not quite as deep as, <laughs> as, as the sound of music. Uh, so I think that'll be fun and refreshing for people that are in both shows. Yeah. But I encourage you to come see the sound of music as it opens on Friday. And it's gonna run for three weekends? Yes, three, three July seasons. 12th through the 28th, Thursdays through Sundays. And talk about a little bit, because both of you have been involved with like high school theater and community theater. Mm -hmm. What's the difference been like for you now stepping into a professional theater setting hmm. that SVST is? Okay. <laughs> um, well, it's more quick, like you alluded to, because I think I counted, and I think we have like four weeks of rehearsal, and then one week of tech, which we're in, uh -huh. which we're in, and then it's three weekends of show. So it's all very fast, and you're there pretty much like the whole afternoon and the whole evening. But it's also a I see a lot more dedication from mm. the actors like when you're there you're there to work whereas like with high school you get more of the like learning element and stuff like that but when you're at rehearsal you're there to work and you just kind of get it done which yeah. I appreciate the professionalism mm. of absolutely that. what about you Kimball um like she said it's just a different environment like one you you're with adults now <laughs> instead yeah. of right. high schoolers <laughs> right and you come when you come to rehearsal you come to work like you don't have time to sit by and wait. Like shows I'm in it takes three months to put them together. This one's just a couple weeks. Yeah. Right. So you gotta you gotta be dedicated. <laughs> you do, and even like the memorization deadline, it's like right away. <laughs> and it's like it, the week after you start rehearsal. <laughs> one of my teachers in high school had this poster that said deadlines are closer than they appear. And especially with summer <laughs> so theater, true. that could not be more true. Yeah. So anyways, the show is beautiful. Uh, you two, in particular are amazing and such a highlight of the show itself. Thank you. Your choreography, your your emotions, your voices. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Um, and I love watching you and I know you all will too. So go to svsummertheater.com and get your tickets. And you can also call 509-368-7897 for the box office. And that opens Friday, July 12th through the 28th. So you have three weeks to check it out. I know you want to go to the lake a little bit too. So you have three weekends um, and opportunities to see it. Thanks for coming on you guys. Yeah, Welcome to this front porch. This week we're filming at the 1899 house bed and breakfast in Brown's edition. It's disconcerting to shower under armed guard. I reached for the shampoo and found myself staring down the barrel of a rifle. I tried to ignore the uniformed soldiers who silently stood guard, but I couldn't. The fact that they were only three inches high and made of plastic didn't ease my discomfort. With a soapy hand, I turned each one of Sam's G.I. Joes to face the wall. Someday, I'd like to shower alone. Many years ago, when our oldest son was ready to bathe in the full-size tub, we bought him a family of rubber, yellow rubber duckies. Then his grandma bought him a ship. That ship turned into a plastic fleet, a small navy. When Alex was born, foam blocks were added. At least they didn't hurt when you stepped on them and they stuck to the wall. Unfortunately, Ethan still had his fleet and his ducks and our tub was getting crowded. By the time Zachary arrived, his older brothers refused to bathe without their Star Wars action figures. One night, I decided to enjoy a bubble bath. I filled the tub and slid down into the sweet-smelling foam. I jumped back up immediately. My relaxing soap was rudely interrupted when my posterior had a close call with Yoda and his lightsaber. Just when the kids graduated to taking showers by themselves and outgrew tub toys, Sam arrived and the bath time collection began again. Sesame Street and Star Wars figures were replaced by G.I. Joes. The bathroom echoed with simulated gunfire and the splash of falling soldiers. Now that season's past, 
and toy soldiers in the tub have been replaced by razors on the vanity, whisker stubble around the drain, and cans of Axe body spray on the countertop. But for a while, our shower was the safest, most secure, well-guarded spot in the neighborhood. And that's the view from this front porch. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on Spokane Talks. We'll see you next time for more news, views, and conversation. Bye-bye. Spokane Talks is about you. Give us your feedback and comments at info at spokanetalksmedia.com. Spokane Talks is everywhere you are. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and spokanetalksmedia.com. Spokane Talks is brought to you in part by Rada Paint and River Ridge Hardware. We'll be back next week with the latest news, views, and conversation. Please join us.